in the kitchen today with my dad. <laughs> and today we're making cream of crab soup. All right, we're getting ready to start our cream of crab soup. First, I want to go over the ingredients we're going to use. So first, we're going to have butter. And we're going to have all-purpose flour. This is what we're going to do to use when we make our roux. And then... So why are we making a roux? So the reason why we're making a roux is uh, we're, we want a nice bechamel base, which is basically a French way of saying a uh, white sauce. Now, typically a bechamel involves onion, uh, clove, bay leaf, and typically you would take that um, mixture and um, put it with milk and let it reduce down and cook down until it gets thick. But with a roux, we're gonna speed up that process and we're not gonna be using a lot of those flavors except for the shallots. Um, and which is gonna be our next shallots that we're gonna use. And then we're also gonna use some clam juice. Um, I couldn't find any seafood base, so we're gonna use clam juice that's still in the shellfish family as crab. And then we're gonna have some garlic. And then we'll also have, of course, uh, lump crab meat. Also gonna share wine also. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to, um, we're gonna mix some shallots here. So this is what they look like, shallots. Um, they're basically, I guess the best way to describe it is like a small onion. Um, it's the same, it has the same style of an onion where it has skin and root, and it's a root vegetable, as you can see. I'm cutting the ends off right here. I'm gonna slice it down the middle here. And I'm gonna peel the skin off like so. Again, just like an onion. But it does have the same flavor as an onion. I dare say it's a little bit sweeter than a regular onion. And it's gonna go really good with the soup. Can you use onion? Could I use onion in the soup? Yeah, I could use onion in the soup. But uh, I want this to be a, a real cream of I want this big true cream of crab soup, so I don't want to have too much other stuff up in there that could, you know, make it too chunky. I want this to be as smooth as possible. So I'm gonna start with the. Um, a lot of people like to. Uh, I'm gonna start with a small dice and turn this into a mix. Some slices here. because I want this to be as small as possible. So first I start with small dice and then I just gather all, gather all together and just start doing chopping motions just like you would if you were chopping parsley. As you can see as I continue to chop it, it's getting smaller. Now, if you don't think you have good enough knife cutting skills, you could do this in a blender or a food processor. Just uh, cut it into small pieces and then put it in a food processor and then you could just blend it and you can mince it that way as well. A lot of chefs do this uh, in, the, uh, in a professional kitchen when they gotta uh, mince large amounts of garlic or shallots or onions and they wanna do it very quickly with a large amount. I don't, I don't want a whole bunch of large pieces in this soup. So it needs to be very small. So that it blends well together. Still, it's gonna have that creamy consistency when, when we start putting the soup together. So as you can see now, this is getting really, really small here. I'm gonna be making a fair bit amount of soup here. So you can see I got two more shallots. So I got it at the consistency that I want. So we're gonna pause here in the video. I'm gonna continue mixing. And once we get all that done, we'll start making the soup. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna make our roux uh, to get ready to go for our soup. So I got some butter here. Okay, I'm gonna throw that in. And we're gonna start melting that. And what we're gonna do is once the butter gets completely melted, we're gonna add flour. And then we're gonna start to cook it a little bit on the stove. Now here's the thing about roux. Again, what basically what it is, is butter and flour um, equal parts 
mix. So I got about a quarter of a cup of butter here and I'm gonna put obviously a quarter of a cup of uh, flour in here. Again, I'm waiting for my butter to completely melt. What's gonna happen is once I uh, melt the butter, I'm gonna add the flour and I'm gonna mix it all together. I'm probably gonna use a whisk, you can use a spoon. And then I actually wanna start cooking the roux a little bit because though you could make roux uh, very quickly by just mixing the melted butter and the flour, you can also start doing a process with cooking the roux in the pan. There's three stages of roux. There's a uh, blonde roux, which is what we're gonna do today, um, and a brown roux, and then a dark brown. So uh, a blonde- oh, it depends on the butter, right? No, it depends. It's gonna depend on how long you cook the roux. It's gonna make it change color. Oh, that was like if you brown the butter, then go ahead and brown. No, no, no. You're going to brown the roux, not the butter. You oh. just want the butter to melt. And then once you add the flour to do the roux, then you're going to brown the roux. Let me give you a couple of examples of what you would use each stage for. So a blonde roux, which is what we're going to use today, is something that you want to use for maybe a, a sauce or a gravy that's going to be almost translucent or white, uh, which is what we're going to do today. And then if you make a brown roux, that's really good for obviously a brown sauce or a brown uh, gravy, uh, things like um, a sauce for a gravy for like turkey um, or definitely like a chicken sauce. What about mac and cheese? Or is that Possibly mac and cheese, you could take it that far. But when you want a dark brown roux, that's really good for sauces that are gonna be for red meat, such as lamb, beef, uh, possibly even pork. Oh, the reduction sauce that we made? Uh, the reduction sauce that we oh, made? Oh, wait, no, that was, we, we did put a little bit of roux in there to make it thicker. For, for which one? You know, for the reduction sauce that had the red wine in it? Yeah, 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 yes, that's right. But, um, I did, I did, I only made like a brown roux for that, but yeah, yeah, a brown roux. Yeah. Now, um, if you want to do a dark brown roux, like I said, that's good for red meats, like I just mentioned. And, uh, a good example of what you would use a dark brown roux for is gumbo. If you're making gumbo, you need a dark brown roux. Because if you know, if you ever made a gumbo, you've seen gumbo, it's always a dark brown color. The reason why it gets that color is from two things. It's the dark brown roux and the sassafras or gumbo filet that you put in gumbo. What's sassafras? Sassafras is a type of herb used for gumbo. Mm. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, our butter's almost, uh, almost there. I'm gonna go ahead and bring our flour over. Um, I'm gonna use this... Uh, Measuring cup here to kind of dig into my bag of flour. And then I'm going to get a whisk. Alright, I have my whisk now. Got that all mixed up there. I mean, melted rather. Rather, I'm gonna go ahead now. Get some, put some flour in here, and we're gonna start to mix. Now, some people like a loose roux. Some people like a stiff roux. We're gonna try and keep it around the middle here. Uh, we're gonna make about almost a gallon of soup, close to it. So I definitely want about half a cup to a cup of roux, give or take. If you have seen our steak and cheese video where we make a, a cheesy bechamel sauce, then this is another way you can use a roux. Ab absolutely, though. We're good. You use it for your bechamel sauce, for your steak uh, for your steak and cheese uh, lasagna there. And if you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's really good. Really good. Bree and Mommy did that. I'm going to add a little bit more flour here. So we're probably getting to uh, close, almost close to a cup of flour here uh, to this um, quarter pound of uh, flour. So we're getting pretty good here. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. I don't want it too oily. And then what we're gonna do is, once I add this in, I wanna actually cook it a little bit. While it's here on the stove. So now it's good. Now I'm just gonna let it sit here and it's gonna bubble up a little bit. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of that. And then we'll probably take a pause, but not just yet, but we'll take a pause. Let me finish cooking the roux where it needs to be. I'll show it to you and then we'll add it to the soup. Right there. Mm -hmm. 
this couldn't happen again. All right, as you can see, it's starting to bubble up a little bit. And, as, and if you look closely right there where my whiskers are starting to turn a little bit white on the bottom, that means that it's starting to cook good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pause now. I'm gonna finish cooking this roux, and then when it's ready, we'll come back. Okay, so now we've got our roux where we want it. We had a nice blonde roux, because the next stage will be our brown roux. So I don't wanna take it too far now. So I'm gonna take this and put this to the side. And now we're ready to actually start our soup. So now I'm gonna bring over our pot. Like so, that's good. And let's make sure I'm gonna have a rubber spatula and I'm gonna add our shallots. Are you gonna caramelize it? Yeah, we're gonna do a quick saute here. Hopefully this don't spatter too much. I just want my I just want my shallots to be somewhat translucent. So this is gonna cook pretty fast. This won't take long. And then my next step, before I take my shallots too far, I'm gonna add our garlic. Now that's smelling nice and good. So before again, before that goes too far now, now it's time to add our wine. Now we use, when it comes to adding wine, we, we're using an electric stove, so this should be okay, but just be careful. It is alcohol, and it could flare up on you and flame up on you, so just be careful. But now we're deglazing the pan with our wine here. Uh, cooking wine really gives a good flavor. If you, you could do this without cooking wine, yes. That is possible to do this without cooking wine. But uh, we want to have some good flavor here. Okay, so that's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and I want this to have a lot of wine flavor, so I got a second bottle here. I'm gonna add in. Now, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna Add the rest of this wine in here. You can use white wine, can you? You can use white wine, yep. You can use white wine. Uh, you can use uh, any kind of white wine, sherry wine, any kind of sherry. Uh, even Marsala, if you like the flavor of Marsala, you can do that as well. Just like theirs, um, sherry cooking wine, uh, white cooking wine, red cooking wine is also Marsala cooking wine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a pause here. We're going to bring this to a boil and we'll talk about the reduction process. Okay. All right. All right. As you can see here, we're starting to boil here. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm reducing the wine, increasing the flavor of it and also cooking the alcohol out of it. So if for people who are concerned that, you know, if you put wine in food, um, is it going to have that intoxication factor? Not if you're doing something like this where you're cooking the wine and you're cooking all the alcohol out of it, but now only the flavor remains. So again, that's what we're doing here. Once we get it to about half or a quarter, uh, the next step is we're going to add our stock or our chicken, um, not our chicken, but excuse me, our clam juice, which is going to serve as our stock. So yes, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. All right, we'll be back. All right, now that our uh, sherry wine has reduced, remember we got our shallots and our garlic in here. Uh, I just had a quick taste test, it's really good. So now we're gonna add our uh, clam juice. Just gonna bring the temperature down. Our clam juice here. Do we have to add any like clam juice or you know? Well, yes, because you want a seafood flavor, and though there is some juice in the 
and the lump crab meat that we're gonna put put in here, uh, it's not gonna come until the end, number one. And I need to have some kind of seafood base to it. So basically, once I add all my clam juice, I'm gonna bring it back to boil. Once I've done that, then we're gonna add in our heavy cream. Okay. So we will come back once our uh, mixtures come to a boil. Okay, uh, now we're at the next part. Uh, we got our, our uh, stock of clam juice and our sherry wine reduction uh, boiling here. So now we're ready to add our heavy cream. And what we're going to do is, once we add the heavy cream, we'll see where our consistency is at. Add our heavy cream now. So when are you gonna add the Not until we've had a look at how much, at what our, yeah, our consistency is looking like. Uh, not until I've added in all the cream and possibly milk. Gotta see how how well this is gonna be. How our consistency is gonna look like. Okay, we got some more heavy cream. I noticed that uh, some heavy cream, uh, go ahead and stir it, thank you. Uh, some, of, some heavy cream can be really thick and stick inside the container. So it doesn't hurt to add to, you know, pour all your cream out and then if there's any left, uh, the old trick that some of us like to use is add some water to it. And, you know, put some water in, uh, in the container to get the rest of the, the stuff out. That doesn't have more cream here. Because depending on how thick this gets, uh, we may be adding a little bit of water to help thin it out. So we're going to add in some more heavy cream now. And as you can see, this is really thick. It, it's frozen. That's okay. Like I said, a little water will add to it, won't hurt. fairly thick. I might add a little milk to it. The reason why it's getting thinner is because, you know, butter is actually made with heavy whipping cream, so, you know, that kind of makes sense. Yes, exactly, yeah, heavy, heavy, heavy cream is, um, I mean, it acts just like butter in that when it's really cold, it solidifies. Well, that's because it has butter in it, but that's how you make butter, Yeah, you know? so, that now, so that's how it gets harder. Is let this come up to a boil. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit of milk now. Not a whole lot. I'm going to go ahead and add a little milk now. We're going to let this come back up to a boil. Um, and that's a pretty good, I think that's going to be enough right there. That should be enough for the root to get thick. So we're going to bring this back up to a boil and we'll come back and we'll start adding in our root. Okay. Okay, as you can see here now, our uh, cream mixture of heavy cream and milk is now starting to come up to a slow boil. <laughs> you don't want this to be a rapid boil. So like, for example, if you have it on the stove uh, with electric, uh, I got it cooking at around eight. I didn't want it on high because one thing about this is that it can start to bubble up on your fast and rise. Um, if you do this on gas, as you can see, it's starting to rise now. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my roux. Really quickly, so you gotta be really careful. So, I'm incorporating that in. I'm gonna stir it in. You can see here, stirring it in. I'm gonna add in some more. And as soon as you get it in there, it's good to stir it because if you don't, then it's going to have lumps and you don't want a lumpy soup. It's gonna be smooth and creamy. So, since it's coming to a rolling ball, I'm going to turn this down as well. But first, I'll make sure I get all that room mixed in. Okay, got a little bit more here to go. Ooh, it looks thick. Yeah, that's going to be good. And it's going to get even thicker with the room in here. I just got a little bit more to go here. Get all this. <laughs> Really goodness. Really goodness. Okay. 
Now I'm going to turn it down to about four here on the electric stove. And then we're going to just let this go for a little while. And so we'll be right back. Okay, we're almost there now. Uh, we've added our roux in and now we've got this on a low boil, okay? Now, the way to know if you made a good sauce or a soup um, that you, uh, is a good consistency is to do the spoon test, the back of a spoon test. In other words, when you dip it in, it should be able to coat the back of a spoon. See how that's coating the back of the spoon and staying on? We're good now, now we're ready to finish this off. We're gonna add some salt and some pepper. To taste, I'll start with some black pepper. White uh, pepper is also good with this. Um, if, if you're particular about seeing uh, black pepper flakes in your soup, we're not. So we're gonna go ahead with that. About a good tablespoon or so here. Why is the soup like taking over the black pepper? It's the, the current of the heat. The heat's boiling up and it's and it's collapsing in the middle. Oh, you're just sucking it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the flow of the liquid uh, with the heat going in there. Like a, like a water current, but in this case, a soup current. All right, I got some pink Himalayan salt. We're gonna season the taste here. Okay, I like that, how that's looking. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and give it a quick stir. And now, our final and last ingredient is, you guessed it, the crab. So let's start putting that in. All right, got our crab meat here, open up the can. And we're ready to put it in. Could you just, also use imitation crab meat? You can, but I don't recommend it. Oh, well, what's imitation crab meat made with? Uh, it's made out of fish. fish. Yeah, f fish meat just forced together. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And this right here is real crab. Yeah, this is real crab meat here. I'm go ahead and break some of that down. I can smell the crab uh, here. It's going to fuse with our soup and give it a nice crabby flavor. Also, there's a little bit of crab juice in here that we'd like to take advantage of as well. It'll also add flavor. Okay, let's keep adding. It's looking really good here. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead and pass the next one. Thank you, ma'am. All right, we'll keep it going. Last one. Every last bit of that. Juice is important because again we couldn't find any seafood base, so any any juice we can get from here is what we want. All right, now let's finish adding this in. See, it's nice and so nice and thick, which is the other reason why I wanted to make sure it's really good and thick because once you start adding the crab meat, it can dilute it a little bit. Can this also be called like crab chowder? Yes, but Braid, the thing is, a chowder by definition, it is a it is a cream or white cream based soup or milk based soup, but chowder by definition is uh, <laughs> potatoes, onions, celery, sometimes bacon, and then whatever you're gonna your meat gonna be in there, whether it's gonna be uh, clams, crab, shrimp, seafood, chicken, whatever. But chowder by definition is a cream base, potatoes. Onions, celery, sometimes bacon. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is pretty much it. We're gonna bring it back, bring it back to a, uh, a slow boil here in a moment, and that's gonna be that. We'll be ready to do a presentation. All right. So now we're trying to build up our plate. Yep. So I'm boiling it up now. Right. There's our cream of crab soup. Um, so um, I'm going to put a little bit of... One thing I did not mention is I did add some Old Bay to it. Old Bay seasoning and now I'm sprinkling some on top for a good garnish. Did you also add some lemon juice? I did, that's correct. And I also added some lemon juice. I think any seafood deserves some lemon juice to go with it. And then some simple Ritz cookies on the side here. Uh, to have with you, to have with your soup. So, and then if you want to get really fancy, you could take some crab meat to the side and put that right on top. But this is basically it. All right, so here we have a bowl of cream of crab soup, and now I'm going to taste testing it. Also, 
also on the side we have some Ritz crackers. Yeah, I may have said Ritz cookies earlier, sorry.